Hey everybody, Joe Jaguar again. Welcome to my channel. Let's talk about a CG5 EQ5 class mounts. Now, here's an oldie, but I think one of the best in its class. Now, this is the Mead version. So let's draw on back then. So these are going back to the early 2000s uh, type of thing. I think they probably stopped making the LX. Uh, this is the LXD 75, I don't know, seven, eight years ago minimum. And then before that, uh, before that probably had them running for uh, a good six to eight years. Uh, they, I think they were very good mounts. This originally was a go-to mount. I just stripped the go-to system out of it uh, with the hand control and I'm actually just going to be converting it to a manual mount with dual axis drive. The reason is, um, a lot of times those go-to features, uh, by the time you align it, time, date, latitude, longitude, some of them want countries, eastern, western, daylight savings time, align at one, two, three stars, level north. You know, by the time you'll do all that, at least 10 minutes, if it's successful. Now, I guess if you know what you're doing, you should be successful, but in case it's not, start over again. For me, been in the hobby, as most of you guys know by my videos, since 93, I don't even need that. Basically, if I can pull a line, um, 60 seconds, I bet you I, it won't take me even that. I'm being generous in doing that. I can just point, let's say, to the planet. All I need is tracking type of thing. Or it doesn't even matter. Find uh, Andromeda, double cluster, ring nebula, dumbbell nebula, the swan, whatever it is. I can just find it with the Telrad so much faster than GoTo uh, can. I'll probably be on my third object. Somebody is just getting it set up by then. Anyway, I like this mount a lot. Back then, the uh, even the Celestron version, the ASGT, both of these came uh, with two inch steel legs. All the mounts now, these days, are coming with 1.75, which is not bad, but it's still two inch diameter is just better. They don't give that anymore. The only name brand I think that does is the, I think it's called the ESO 2 by Bresner. Uh, it's the only company, everybody else is 1.75. Uh, maybe they're trying to save money, but uh, yeah, after these models, uh, they stopped being two inch uh, tripod legs. Anyway, the LXD 75, really good mount for something that can handle up to uh, 20 pounds, I would say, 22 max. Um, I know both companies, Celestron and me, both at that time were saying 30 pounds capacity. There's no way 30 pounds. Maybe they were including the, um, uh, the counterweight. Usually you don't include counterweights to the total weight that it can hold, just whatever your tube is going to be or your scope. Uh, so really, this class mount, the ASGT Celestron, and the LXD 75 should be about 20 pounds, 22 max type of thing, um, and that's for visual. Um, if you're going to be doing astrophotography, it has to be probably at least an EQ6 or something like that. But anyway, I really like the LXD 75. It was a really robust mount. Um, I mean, if you Google it, it was a big improvement over the LXD 55. Um, but this is a bit older now. Now, Mead's new version, I don't think it's quite as good. I mean, it's almost, I think, it's similar. It's called the LX70. So basically, um, it's a manual mount. Didn't come go-to. So if you're looking for a, a manual mount, uh, again, very similar. It's an EQ5 class mount, uh, but it's all manual. You, you can put slow motion controls on it single axis, dual axis drives. Uh, the LXD 75 came with a built-in polar finder and it was illuminated, which was great. You didn't have to. On this model though, you gotta buy the polar finder. Um, it's about 50 to 60 bucks. Um, Canadian for that. And then of course, dual axis drive with tax Canadian, probably about 250. Um, buy a mount new. Um, like this is probably about 600 bucks of tax in Canadian, uh, but anyway, that's that's what it is. It's, they're pretty similar. They're both uh, white color. The LXD 75 is a more uh, white 
or a light, different type of white. This one's a bright uh, white, and this one's more like a dull, like a yellowish white. But um, both mounts are good for uh, the 8 inch SCT, maybe the 6 inch. Um, I've even had the uh, the Mead 7 inch F15 Maxutov on the LXD75, and it was rock solid. Uh, I easily went to 300, 350 power, and it was some of the best views I had of uh, Saturn, Jupiter, the Cassini division was easily distinguishable. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, a Max Rutov is also pretty short, so it's not long arm where the wind can, uh, like a teeter totter type of thing, can, can sway it. But anyway, that's why the um, CG5. Uh, EQ5 class mounts look like. Uh, Celestron has, actually I don't know if Celestron has a manual version. Um, they probably have a go-to version, I think, and I'm not talking about the ABX because that's a little bit heavier duty than these. Um, so I'm not 100% about the Celestron version, but uh, Skywatcher does have, it's also white, uh, pretty much looks like this. Uh, so they have one too. And like I said, uh, Bresner has um, a couple of mounts, uh, go to and non go to. Uh, so there's a lot of choice out there if you're looking for something that can handle 20 to 22 pounds and up to an 8 inch SCT. Maybe you could do the 9 and a quarter inch SCT for visual. Um, this class mount you can also put an 8 inch reflecting. Uh, scope, so an 8 inch F5 reflector. Um, anyway, um, that's it. Cheers.